What a way to start the new year. Disaster. In the early 1970s, the concept of a disaster movie was still new. Gather a group of celebrities, set up some conflicts, and put them through hell, and see who survives, battered and bruised. Are you hurt? That's a stupid question. And in 1972, producer Irwin Allen, who had created peak near-disaster TV shows like Lost in Space and Land of the Giants, The Poseidon Adventure, took place on a capsized cruise vessel. You see, the Poseidon isn't really a ship. It's a hotel. Giving us thrills and a new fear, tsunamis. But this film is the opposite of a disaster and was the highest grossing film of the year. Sporting an all-star ensemble, Gene Hackman, Shelley Winters, and of course, Ernest Borgnine. Audiences watched on the edge of their seat. All of the heart-stopping deck-by-deck climbs as they tried to get to the bottom of the ship before it goes deep. And here we thought the people of Gilligan's Island had it rough. I'm Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember? And let's celebrate the Poseidon Adventure and its 50th anniversary. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to avoid being left behind. Gene Hackman. What do you do after you win the Oscar for Best Acting portraying New York cop Popeye Doyle in The French Connection? You accept your huge paycheck and become a hip, modern reverend who believes God helps those who help themselves. God is pretty busy. Therefore, don't pray to God to solve your problems. Maybe Gene should have stayed in the city. Hackman's early credits begin in 1959, guest starring on shows like The Defenders and three episodes of Brenner. Then he began nabbing film roles, playing Norman in 1964's Lilith, and Dr. John Whipple in 1966's Hawaii. But he really caught people's attention as Buck Barrow in Bonnie and Clyde in 1967, earning a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. From there, he would move decade to decade to widely acclaimed roles like Mississippi Burning and later in the incredible Clint Eastwood directed Unforgiven. Hackman hasn't acted since 2004, but has certainly earned his retirement. From being jailed as a teen in 1946 for stealing candy and soda pop, to fully realizing his bad side as Lex Luthor in the 70s, to delivering the most inspirational pregame speech in Hoosiers. Simply Gene Hackman is a staple in American film. Let the slow clap commence. Ernest Borgnine. Detective Mike is aboard the Poseidon with his new wife, a former prostitute, in the hopes of saving his marriage before their world is quite literally turned upside down. Look, kid, do you know how thick one inch of steel is? It's one inch less than two inches. Playing him is Ernest Borgnine, an actor whose 60 plus year career stands as proof that he had zero problems shifting from one medium to another. He got his start in theater in 1949, making his Broadway debut in the play Harvey. An episode of Captain Video and his Video Rangers in 1951 launched him as a character actor. Many films followed, but audiences really fell in love Love with him as Quentin McHale, which he played in a single one-hour drama titled Seven Against the Sea, spawning a half-hour military comedy called McHale's Navy, which cruised the seas in the 60s. He then starred in the horror cult classic Willard, which saw him attacked by an army of trained rats. Ernest Borgnine appeared in nearly a hundred films, the last being the man who shook the hand of Vicente Fernandez in 2012, as Borgnine passed away that same year at the age of 95. A legend through and through. Red Buttons. One of the most unassuming passengers on the ship is haberdasher James Martin, a love-shy and health-conscious bachelor. Originally set to star in the role was Gene Wilder, but scheduling conflicts forced him to back out. So Martin was ultimately played by comedian Red Buttons. Red was drafted by the Air Force in 1943 and started entertaining the troops within the European theater. Following the war, he appeared in his self-titled CBS show that ran for three seasons beginning in 1952. In 57, he co-starred with Marlon Brando in the drama Sayonara, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Over the years, he shifted back and forth between comedy and drama, but always continued with his stand-up career. Embroidered undershorts. It feels like you're sitting on two pages of Braille. 
<laughs> His final film role was in 1999, co-starring with Betty White in The Story of Us. Sadly, in 2006, Red Buttons passed away from complications of cardiovascular disease. Red was 87 years old. Carol Lindley. Even before the ship is hit by that infernal tidal wave, singer Nani Perry is nervous about singing on New Year's Eve, but she does a wonderful job with The Morning After. There's got to be a morning after. Morning after. Oh, I can't take this. Although her singing voice was dubbed by studio singer Rene Armand, but the song would go on to win one of the two Academy Awards the film garnered, along with visual effects. In 1958, she made her film debut in Disney's The Light in the Forest, and received critical acclaim for her performance in Blue Denim in 1960. The year prior to Poseidon Adventure, she co-starred with Darren McGavin in the vampire TV movie The Night Stalker. Following her ocean excursion, she only appeared in 13 more films, and 8 TV appearances, including 11 trips to Fantasy Island. Lindley had an on-again, off-again 18-year affair with legendary interviewer David Frost, as well as a very very close relationship with Fred Astaire. Many thinking the two would marry. Carol Lindley died of a heart attack in 2019. She was 77 years old. Stella Stevens. Former prostitute Linda doesn't exactly have it easy. For starters, her cop husband is extremely jealous. She'll have to take off that long gown. Like hell she will. And also, you know, the whole sinking ship thing. Bringing Linda to life was actress Stella Stevens. Her career took off when she scored a small role in the Bing Crosby musical Say One For Me in 1959, signing a four-year contract with Paramount Pictures shortly thereafter. Then her centerfold spread in Playboy was one of the most popular issues ever, and she was Playmate of the Month for January 1960. After the Poseidon Adventure, she appeared in three dozen more films, the last being 2010's Mega Condo. Stella is the mother of another actor, Andrew Stevens, and had a long-term relationship with rock guitarist Bob Kulik from 1983 until his death in 2020. Today, Stella is 83 years old and since 2016, has lived in a long-term Alzheimer's care facility in Los Angeles. Shelley Winters Belle Rosen is one half of a retired couple en route to Israel in order to meet their two-year-old grandson for the first time. And boy, was Belle heroic, dusting off her swimming skills to save Gene Hackman's pinned down preacher, which was ultimately her character's demise. I want you to give this to our little grandson. Winters delivered the best acting performance of the stacked cast and was the only actor nominated for an Academy Award. Shelley made her acting debut on Broadway in 1941, rewarded with a Columbia Pictures contract, moving to LA and appearing in a great many films throughout the 40s. In the latter part of the decade, she even shared an apartment with Marilyn Monroe, apparently teaching Marilyn how to act pretty by tilting your head back, keeping your eyes lowered and your mouth partly opened. And Winter sure knew how to act any which way, winning an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for 1959's Diary of Anne Frank. Her final film role was as Professor Summers in La Bamba in 1999. And this blonde bombshell is also the godmother of Laura Dern. Shelley Winters passed away at age 85 in 2006, just five days before her former husband, actor Anthony Franciosa, passed passed away as well. Jack Albertson. Val, is she all right? She got through. She saved the preacher. She cleared the way for all of us. Bell's other half. You'll certainly recognize him as that mooch, Grandpa Joe from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. But boy, is there a lot more to his career. A former high school dropout, he worked a number of odd jobs, including hustling at a pool hall, where he learned tap dance routines from some other hustlers, leading him to put on shows where he began making money entertaining, all leading to winning the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in the Subject Was Roses in 1968. And just as popular on TV, he was of course the man in Chico and the man in the mid to late 70s. We last saw him in 1982's TV movie Terror of Alcatraz, a posthumous credit as Jack died in 1981 at the age of 74. Leslie Nielsen 
Captain Harrison is the man who warns the Poseidon Bridge that there's a wall of water heading this way and as a result cracks everybody up in the audience. Not that what he said was funny back in 1972, but today in the post-airplane naked gun world, surely we can't take that dude seriously. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Nielsen made his TV debut on the anthology series Studio One in 1950, and coming out swinging in 1956, beginning with the crime drama Ransom, co-starring with Glenn Ford and Donna Reed. After Airplane, his career was mostly filled with spoofs, highlighted with the Police Squad TV series that became the Naked Gun film trilogy. Leslie Nielsen passed away in 2010 from pneumonia at the age of 84. Can you believe it's been 50 years since the Poseidon Adventure sunk right to the top of the box office? And with beautiful cinematography and a haunting score by the legend John Williams. The Poseidon Adventure was a smashing success. So let's talk. Would you have followed Gene Hackman up that giant Christmas tree? Or would you have headed straight to the bar to forget your troubles? Tell us every memory of this movie. And as always, don't forget to smash that thumbs up icon for us and subscribe to the channel to avoid missing future deep dives. From all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.